Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer and welcome to Best Kept Plans. Today's video is going to be my reading recap for September 2023. If you're interested in seeing what books I read last month, please stick around. As I said in my introduction, this is going to be my September 2023 reading recap. September was definitely a bit of an interesting month for me. I was able to read quite a few books, which is nice, but a lot of them are very middle of the road, which is okay, but I didn't really have a big, huge standout, and that's kind of a bummer. As you can see, I am not filming in my usual filming spot. I am filming in front of a window though. My window is open. If you hear my neighbors cutting their grass, I apologize. I also still have that pile of books behind me that I de-stashed from my bookshelves. I've just been way too lazy to like get them all into my car to donate, but I definitely need to do that soon because I want to do it before the weather actually gets really, really cold. Getting back to my September recap, I am going to be referencing my Archer and Olive Amy Tangerine reading journal. This is where I keep track of all of the books that I read as well as their ratings. So I'll be referencing this throughout this video. The first book that we're going to talk about for the month of September is Wildfire by Hannah Grace. This is an arc that I was fortunate enough to receive. This book actually comes out on October 3rd. I think this video is going to post after October 3rd, so you are able to get your hands on this when you're seeing this video, and I will say I would definitely recommend that you pick this up and give it a read. This was the first book that I've ever read by Hannah Grace, and it definitely won't be the last. I have not read Icebreaker yet, but having read Wildfire, I definitely want to. This was such a fun kind of summer camp college kid romance. There was like a mutual pining situation going on. There was some steam in here, but I feel like it was the right amount of steam. I'm going to talk later in this video about books that I feel like almost had too much steam to them and it took away from the more emotional aspects of the story, but this was not that. It had the perfect amount of steam. It definitely dived deep with the characters, which I really appreciated, and I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. The next book that we're going to talk about is an arc that I actually got through NetGalley, and that is Persephone Made Me Do It by Trista Matier. This is the second book of poetry that I've read by Trista Matier. She has a series. The first book is Aphrodite Made Me Do It, which I have read. The second is Artemis Made Me Do It, which I have not read yet. And then the third is Persephone Made Me Do It. I love the way that she combines her poetry with some visual imagery. And while I was reading this digitally and it was only in black and white, I still enjoyed that, even though I think I would have enjoyed it more if I was seeing it in color. I didn't like this as much as Aphrodite made me do it, but I enjoyed it enough that I want to read more poetry by Tristan Matier. So I did give this three and a half out of five stars. And this was the book of poetry that I used for my poetry challenge throughout this year. I want to read one book of poetry every month. So I chose this book to do that. The next is a mystery thriller that I got through NetGalley, and that is The House Beyond the Dunes by Mary Burton. This was the mystery thriller book that I used for my mystery thriller challenge. Just like wanting to read one book of poetry every month, I want to read one mystery thriller every month, so I chose this book to do that. I will say this book ended up being quite a bit of a letdown for me. I think initially I was intrigued pretty quickly and I thought that the story could be very interesting, but it just really lost me in at least the final third of the book. I couldn't give it a better rating than two and a half out of five stars. I also feel like there was mention of a pretty serious mental illness in the story that I just don't think was given the time that it needed to be explained properly. And that was, I think, a real big missed opportunity. Honestly, I would say you could stay away from it. 
The next book that I ended up reading was a major anticipated release from me, and that is Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. This is the third book in the Knock 'em Out series. It is the last book in that series. I read that whole series this year. So I read Things We Left Behind in January and really liked it. I read Things We Hide From The Light in February when it came out. Didn't like it as much, but still enjoyed it. And then I read uh, Things We Le Left Behind in September. I will say I was really, really, really looking forward to this story because I was very intrigued by Lucian and Sloan reading the other two books in the series. And I do feel like I really enjoyed this book. Like I felt like the steaminess was very steamy. I felt like there was a lot of character development for Lucian which I really appreciated. I liked that there was then and now but one thing I've realized in reading the Knock'em Out series as a whole not just this book is that I don't know that romance suspense is really for me. It just doesn't work for me I don't think. Um, I I understood it and I was able to be okay with it in Things We Left Behind. In Things We Hide From The Light, it just felt like such a copy and paste from the first book that I just couldn't get into it. This one was definitely a little bit more unique in the way that it was done. But again, overall, that just that aspect of the story is just not my favorite. Um, I did give this four and a half out of five stars. I think I rated Things We Left Behind four and a half out of five stars as well. And honestly, I would say I probably like that one a hair more than this. So if I did quarter ratings, I'd probably rate this as a 4.25, but 4.5 is my final rating. The next book that we're gonna talk about is an audiobook that I listened to, and that is Mixed Signals by BK Borison. This is the third book in the Love Light Farms series. I think the fourth book in the series has not come out yet. I've actually listened to all of these in audiobook, and I will say I did really enjoy this one. This is probably my favorite book in the series if not my second favorite behind Love Light Farms. I enjoyed our female and male main characters. I liked their dynamic together. I liked the steaminess in here. Middle of the road book for me, I gave it a three and a half out of five stars, but not in a bad way. Like I enjoyed this book and I would recommend this book. It just wasn't life changing for me as a romance. The next book that we're going to talk about is actually my Instagram challenge book for September. Every month of the year, I read one book that was recommended to me by someone on Instagram. And the book that I read for September was Mile High by Liv's Tom Forde. I don't know if it's Tom Ford or Tom Forde. If somebody knows, please tell me in please tell me in the comments because I feel terrible that I don't really know how to pronounce her name. This was recommended to me by Farmer AM2. I hope I'm saying that Instagram handle right. I, what do I say about this book? Okay, so <laughs> I don't mind a sports romance. I actually have found that I really like sports romance. This was a hockey player and a flight attendant romance. I do feel like the male main character there was development and depth and understanding to his story but I feel like he came off so harsh in the beginning that it was kind of hard to get there with him. I wish that the author was a little easier on him in the beginning of the story so that the reader could like him a little bit more a little bit quicker. I did really enjoy the female lead in this. The Steam was definitely steamy, but this is one of those books where I feel like there was just honestly too much of it. This book is really, really long. It's 490 pages, and I'm sorry, but there's absolutely no reason why this book should be that long. This book could have taken off 150 of those pages easy, and I feel like it would have been a more enjoyable read if it had done that. I did give it a three out of five. I didn't hate this, but I had definite issues with it. The next book that I read was an arc that I got through NetGalley. This is one that I wanted to read last month. I'm pretty positive it was on my TBR for August and I just didn't get to it. And that was The One That Got Away by Charlotte Rickson. 
This, I believe, is characterized as a women's fiction. I really hope that it is because to me that definitely makes more sense, I'd say. The story takes place in two timelines, kind of, sort of, but then you get like flashbacks to different points of life in between those timelines. And I did really appreciate the way that the story unfolded for you as the reader. And it is revolving around a relationship between two people, but I feel like at a deeper level, it's about kinship and friendship even more than it is romance. Feeling a deep connection to another human being, regardless of if that's romantic or not. I didn't love this book. I didn't dislike this book. I ended up giving it three out of five stars, but it was certainly interesting and I'm glad I read it. The next book that I read was actually not one that was on my TBR for September, but after having read Mile High by Liz Tom Ford, Tom Ford A, I apologize, I ended up picking up The Right Move. That is the next book in this Windy City series that she has going on. I don't know if the third book is out yet or it's going to be coming out. I had heard that this book is better. I'd heard that this is the one that everybody loves in reading both Mile High and The Right Move. And so I was excited to give it a read. It is brother of the female main character in the first book and best friend of the female character in the first book. And so I thought that was fun and interesting. I did enjoy this book. Again, they tried to dive a little bit deeper with the characters and I definitely appreciated that. I do feel like once again, this book was too long and I think that that made the book suffer, but I didn't hate it. I gave it three and a half out of five stars. I liked it more than Mile High, but I didn't feel like it was groundbreaking or earth shattering at all. The next book that I attempted to read was Penance by Eliza Clark. This was an arc that I received through NetGalley. Anytime that I get an arc, a review copy, I always try my hardest to make my way through that book. I really don't like DNFing books and I've only DNFed two books this entire year, but I had to DNF this one. This was my second DNF of the year. I made it about 33% of the way into this book and I just found it to be so insufferable that I could not continue on. I was definitely very frustrated and bummed out that that happened because this was one that I was really excited and interested in reading in September. It deals with characters who are in high school and I just found the immaturity to be just too much to get over. I never want to do that in general and especially with a book that I'm receiving as an ARC or a view copy, I never want to DNF it. I want to give it a solid try but I had to DNF this one. Next book that I ended up reading was Praise by Sarah Kate. I intentionally, after reading Penance, wanted to get into something completely different. And so I thought a romance would be a good call. And I wanted to read Praise this month because I received the second, third, and fourth books in this series from Sourcebooks Casablanca, the publisher. So all of those that I received as gifted and arcs, I will be posting reviews for but I wanted to start with the first book in the series and read it the whole way through. This was an age gap romance. It I think is listed almost as being like romance with erotica. It has more uh, sexually like risque scenarios I guess but I didn't find that to be super off-putting or anything. I think that the author did a really great job in those aspects of this book with regards to presenting it in an interesting way and in a way that wasn't so far <laughs> out in left field. I don't think I really love age gap to be totally honest. I, I think how big of a gap it is, how young the younger person is matters. And I think for me, it was just too big of an age gap and the young character was too young. So I really struggled with that. I ended up rating this three out of five stars, nothing earth shattering, but certainly an enjoyable read. Next, I decided to pick up something that was not on my uh, TBR at all, but that I was just in the mood for. And that is, oh, I actually have the physical copy of this. Wait, let me grab it. Hang on a second. 
Okay, so the next book that I read was A Powerless by Elsie Silver. I actually have been collecting the mirror versions of these books because I really enjoyed what I've read of the series so far and I decided that I wanted them. And these are going out of print, so getting them is going to be super difficult. So I figured while it was still fairly easy for me to get most of them, I should pick them up. I really enjoyed Jasper's little appearances in the first two books in the Chestnut Spring series. And so so I was very excited for this. This also seemed like childhood friends to lovers, which is my absolute favorite romance trope. Unfortunately, I felt like I was very let down by this one and I don't know exactly why. I think that the steam was off-putting for me in this one. It was not what I expected from Jasper as a character and while I am not here to shame anyone for their sexual preferences or bedroom preferences, I just wasn't expecting what we got <laughs> from Jasper in this book. I, I ended up giving him this three out of five stars. Again, like I just, I thought I was going to love this so much more than I did. So it was a little bit of a disappointment, but it is by no means a bad book. And I would certainly still recommend it as I would recommend the other two books in the series that I've read so far. So yeah, three out of five stars. The next book that I ended up reading was an arc that I got through NetGalley and that was People Collide by Isle McElroy. I did not know what I was getting into when I picked up this book. I just really liked the cover and I thought the title was very interesting. It is such a unique story and really not expected and so wild in the way that it's done that I really had a good time reading this. I enjoyed reading this. It's pretty short too. The story just goes, goes, goes. And that like made me as a reader want to keep going, want to keep reading to figure out and see what was going to happen. I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I definitely didn't think I was going to enjoy this as much as I did. And I'm really glad I got a chance to read it. The next book that I read, <laughs> I kind of have to laugh about because... I did not have any intention of reading this this month. I actually filmed my October TBR video, which we'll be posting probably next week, the last week of September. So when you watch that October TBR video, you're actually going to see this book in there because my intention was to read this in October, but I don't know. I finished People Collide and I wanted to pick up a romance and I wanted to pick up something that I knew I was going to be able to read kind of quick. And so I decided to pick this one up and that is Eyes on Me by Sarah Kate. This is the second book in the Salacious Players Club series, the first of which was Praise. This I received from Sourcebooks Casablanca. So thank you to them for sending this to me. This wasn't an ARC. This is already available in this discrete cover. These books are available on Kindle Unlimited. There is an age gap in here. It's not as extreme as the age gap in the first book in the series. So that aspect of it was not as awful for me. I didn't even mention that praise on top of being like a 20 year age gap romance is ex-boyfriend's father trope as well. <laughs> totally forgot to mention that. This one is step sibling trope. <laughs> oh. I will say that I did really appreciate that this book dealt with mental illness, depression, what that can look like for someone, how that's a battle that never is really over. I did definitely appreciate that. The steamy scenes were certainly steamy in here. And everything re revolves around this salacious players club, which is an actual club. It is a sex club. And so, of course, a little bit more risque sexual content, but done really well, I felt like. I ended up giving this two and a half out of five stars, genuinely, because I'm just never going to be able to get over that step sibling trope. I just think that's just one of those things where I'm just kind of like, eh, no, not for me. Which is really interesting because I did read Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover, and I really, really liked that book, and that does have step sibling in it. But it's a little, it's done in a little bit more of a unique way. This is like she was a kid and he was an early adult when they became step siblings. It doesn't work for me. The next book that I ended up picking up 
was one that I actually started before Eyes on Me. I think I even probably started it before Powerless. And that's Just Haven't Met You Yet by Sophie Cousins. I listened to this as an audiobook. I listened to it over the course of probably two weeks when I was doing my longer commutes to work. And I actually really enjoyed this. I have found that I like audiobooks that have British narrators and this one does. I thought the story was fun and interesting. I loved the male lead character. I do think that there were parts of this story that needed to be fleshed out just a little bit more. And I didn't like the kind of back and forth, back and forth that we got towards the end of the book, but I certainly enjoyed this as a read and definitely enjoyed it as an audiobook. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. And then the last book that I ended up reading in the month of September is one that I received as a review copy. So thank you to Macmillan and Tor Publishing for this book. That is The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England by Brandon Sanderson. I have never read a Sa Brandon Sanderson book before this, so I was super excited to read this. The title of this completely caught my attention. I found this to be really interesting. <laughs> it was a little bit of a more challenging read for me to get through like it took me a little while to get through this book but I did still enjoy it as a read I enjoyed it a lot our main character comes from the future for us but he's going back into medieval times and it's just really interesting to see <laughs> like the changes in language between future language and medieval language. He has amnesia and so there's that aspect of it where he has no idea where he is or what's going on and so that's actually really fun as a reader who also has no idea what's going on. You're kind of figuring things out with the main character. It's really interesting to kind of see where the journey takes him in terms of learning where he is, why he's there. You know, it dives into, you know, him as a as a person just feeling like he's not in a good place, like he isn't the person he thought he would be or he wants to be. And how do you overcome that? How do you push yourself to be the person that you want to be to make yourself proud. So I really appreciated that. And it's also interspersed and let's see if I can find it. It's interspersed with like an actual handbook. <laughs> and so there are these really funny little excerpts in the book that are like meant to be from a handbook. And they're hysterical. Like they're so funny and it makes you giggle and laugh or at least it made me giggle and laugh. So I did really enjoy this. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. I think I'm still honestly too nervous to dive into more Brandon Sanderson, but it's certainly something that I will consider in the future because I really did enjoy this read. And that is it for my September 2023 reading recap. I again read quite a few books this month, but no five star reads for me in the month of September. This is actually the first month this year that I haven't had a five star read and that's okay. I just wish I did have a five star read this month. <laughs> I want to have a five star read every month. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the month of October will bring me a five star read, will bring me a bunch of books that I really enjoy. And yeah, that's it for September. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have read any of these books, please put some spoiler free thoughts down below. I love chatting with people about the books that I've read. And as always, everyone, please be safe. Bye bye.